part two. We uh, we put it all back together. The compressor is looking like this. It actually engaged, but now we're getting these readings where we have, that's where a typical R22 would read on your gauge. But on this side, it's really low. It's way below 200. So we had to ask ourselves why. There's a couple possibilities why this might happen. If you get to the job, you're likely to run into some uh, some trash like this where you can't read nothing. The reason I look at that sticker is because I want to know what the run load amps is. When this unit is, when this compressor or unit is running, I want to know how many amps this compressor is supposed to run. I see it's running 7.5 amps. But that's the total amount of amps on a whole unit, not just the compressor. So I need to look at the, just the compressor wire to find out about just the compressor. Just the compressor is running at 4 amps. Well, what does this tell us by looking at the unit? Well, what it tells us is, uh, first thing, we can't see the run load amps, the RLA. That'll tell us a lot of information, but we don't got it. So what we have to do is go off our experience. Experience says four amps on the compressor is not very much. Considering how low the head pressure is, that these pressures are likely off. Uh, we've seen that there's an egg-shaped compressor. Well, that egg-shaped compressor is a reciprocating compressor, and it's got valves in it. Since uh, it's most likely that those valves are weak and that uh, they're not able to compress correctly, that's part of the reason why it isn't pulling much power because there's not a lot of compression going on in the compressor. So it tells me that uh, I could check the superheat and subcooling and it's probably going to be off. It's probably not uh, sending the right amount of refrigerant into the indoor unit and that's the reason it isn't cooling.